Well, I got a few minutes while everything is uh, rinsing out there. I wanted to talk to you about bark tanning. Now, normally, you would start off with a weak liquor, which means you would take some tree bark and uh, boil it down and store the first boiling, store the second boiling, store the third boiling. Maybe the fourth or fifth, you would pour into a bucket, maybe combine them. Uh, we'll talk a little more about that in a minute. This is a hide that was in weak liquor, liquor that had been used before for uh, two weeks. I moved it to a stronger liquor that had been steeped up before, and I hope I have enough uh, room on this card to show you that strong liquor that had weakened from the hide soaking in it, soaking up the tannic acids. I just wanted to talk to you briefly about the bark. This is live oak. The fellow that worked for me had a tree that was splitting a live oak tree over his house. It rained for about two weeks. And, uh, this tree was alive. We dragged it out there in the woods and covered it up with some tarps and some ropes and uh, kept it dry. And when the bark started splitting, we went out there with hatchets and axes and busted the bark off, just pried it off and popped off in big hunks. Now I got it stored in a 50 gallon drum with a lid on it. And what you want is the, the bark right up next to the wood itself. That's the cambium layer. And you can see by the way this got wet and reacted and turned black that it's full of tannic acid. So this is some good stuff. This one got wet so I didn't use this particular piece. But you just knock green chunks off the outside best you can. Or knock the bark chunks off the inside best you can. Put them in a pot and boil them. Uh, this hide had already been through two steps in a strengthening process of the liquor. So I just used the first boiling off this one to go ahead and finish it and I'll dilute this with some uh, some older bark liquor that's been been, been saved. I'm going to slip this out of hand maybe get a picture of the whole thing. After two days in this, it drawed up maybe uh, another 5 to 8% reduction in size. All right, be right back. All right, I brought this thing out here. Hopefully we can see it a little bit better. See a couple places. Maybe the skin's been pinched up on itself. It's turned a little color. So I'm sure it's tanned. But I'd like for it to stain and be the color of the rest of it. This is a neat looking uh, sort of a purplish, really dark purple color. You can tell this was a really huge deer too. Big size. This is uh, stretched out. This is easily uh, about four foot long. So I'm going to get a nice several pieces of leather out of this one until where it's splotchy where it's been in the, it's been laying on itself I didn't do the most terrific job fleshing so it's a little fuzzy on the back side I don't mind it for what purpose it's going to serve you see where little bits of bark are in there on it this has been about 40 days all together Let's see, four weeks, 28 days. This is week five. It's about to be 35 days, and then uh, hopefully it'll be done. All right, I'm going to cut away, go get my scissors, and I'll show you how to do a check. All right, I've sort of just reoriented this thing so that you can see this is the neck end. See, this is the really thick part of the hide. I'm just going to make a cut right over here, sort of in the edge of it, so it's not too invasive. Right over here somewhere. Cut up into it about a half an inch. Now you can see that the color is gone all the way to the middle. There's just a little white streak, and it's actually dark, much darker than uh, the skin normally is. So this tan, this hide is tanned through, 
We'll see if I can get it to strike all the way through. I'd like to leave it in there a little bit longer, just to be sure. Uh, I'm going to try to work out these splotchy spots that are on the hide. I'm going to put it in neck down this time so that the top end more or less floats and uh, go from there. See you in about another week.